Now that meant that they sailed to America and they got there before Christopher Columbus. And he said, the white men won't put this in the books, but that's our story. That was an elder in the Dakota Sioux group, right? Mm. We come from the creation land. We left there after much war and much fighting. Mm. Now, I spoke to an old Aboriginal elder in Australia from the Moon and Jali tribe, and here's their story. Once in the middle of the world, there was much war and much fighting. And so we left and we came to this country and you begin to get a totally different picture. We brought with us metal tools, but we discovered the spirits and we began to worship them and we lost the ability to make metal. Mm. Now they're good at wood. But you see, that history is this way. This way. And the evolutionary history the is the other way. And it's a totally different perspective. Exactly. Now, when you have a think about the Bible's history, you mention Adam. Yes. Now, what was he made from? Dirt. 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 Okay, in that Native American story, what was the first man made of? Uh, red dirt. Red dirt, very good. Well, if you talk to that Moon and Jali elder in Australia and ask him for their story about the first man, and people don't need to take my word for it, it's on the video, right? Yeah. He says, the, the great spirit, right? Biami, they called him. He took the red earth and he shaped it into the first two men. Mm -hmm. And he only had enough dirt left to make one woman. And that was asking for trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got a, a funny twist yeah. to the story. Yeah. But did you catch the common yeah. thing? Exactly the same thing. It was red dirt. Yeah. Now, you, you're a bit of a theologian. So if you were to look up a Hebrew dictionary for the word Adam, mm. Do you remember what the word means? Yes, it's Adama, means red dirt. Red dirt. The DM bit is mm -hmm. the same as the word in blood. DM, red, right? So therefore you'll find that Adam is from the red earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here's the problem. You see, I grew up believing in evolution. I didn't grow up in the church. My mind was full of the fact that I was an overgrown orangutan with bigger brains and less hair, right? And if I evolved far enough, we could you know, do all sorts of wonderful things. Well, the Bible says, no, God made the first man, he made him out of the earth, and his name means red. If evolution is true, what's the likelihood of all the different races who've evolved having a story about the first man being made out of earth, and secondly, no matter what color they are, because Aborigines are black, the natives in America are red-skinned, and the Hebrew people are light-skinned. Yeah. Yeah. What's the possibility, if we all evolved, of them having the same colour for the first man? Answer? None. None. Zero. Zilch. In fact, if there never was a worldwide flood, what's the possibility of finding that story all over the world? None. This, it's zero again. Yes. And so over and over again, you find the evidence shows that whatever you know or don't know about the history of the world, the cultures of the world point back to two common events. One is creation, they don't have an evolutionary story, mm -hmm. and one is Noah's flood. Mm -hmm. There was a judgment and all the people of the world were on one big boat. Mm -hmm. Now if you'd read us the last verse of Genesis chapter 10, remember we've just finished the story of Noah in the Bible and yes. now it's making some comments. So Genesis chapter 10, last verse, these are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Uh-huh. Do you remember the names of Noah's son? Yes, uh, uh, Shem, Ham and Japheth. Okay, now just as Adam has got a color name built into him, the DM bit is color, mm -hmm. it's a red, so is Ham. Ham's Hebrew for dark and Japheth is Hebrew, he's got fair built into his name. Shem Shem hasn't got any color built into his name. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is the Bible is emphatic that all the people in the world came from those four people. Yeah. Noah, his wife, mm -hmm. and the three boys, and their wives, right? Now, if you want to do a bit of maths, it's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Adam gives rise to his son, who gives rise to his son, and ten generations later you have Noah. Okay, now Noah, Noah has no name for color in his, his name. His name means rest, mm -hmm. right? Because his grandfather and his father thought, this boy will bring us respite from all the tro mm -hmm. soil and toil and trouble. Okay, so Noah builds the ark. He has three sons. Two of them have color in their names. Mm -hmm. Does that 
suggest anything to you? Yes, of course, that there should be a, a, a common origin for at least two groups of people that are differently colored. Okay, and also it tells you that we still do the same things. Yes. So I'm, you know, European by background. My father was a Scotsman with a name like Mackay. We, our family comes from way up in the north of Scotland. But we use colour to describe ourselves. So if you go to my hometown of Tongue, it's no use looking up the phone book because everybody's Mackay, right? It's just a waste of time. <laughs> so therefore you have Mackay Roy and Mackay Do, the bread Mackays and the black Mackays, depending on the colour of your hair, okay. right? Okay. That's how you do it. That's interesting. And I have a daughter who we call Bronwyn. Uh -huh. Now Bronwyn is Welsh for fair. Now if you go to Wales, you'll find the average Welsh person is darker than an English person. So they, every now and then they'll have a child who was born with blue eyes and blonde hair. So it's a brown one, a fair one, right? Interesting. And so I use that word because guess what colour hair my daughter's got? Blonde. She's blonde. Guess what colour eyes she's got? Got me blue. Blue, that's right. And she's very fair skin. <laughs> so we still do exactly the same thing. Interesting. Now, as you've travelled the world and tried to witness to people, do they ever ask you about the colours of people? Uh, yes, some of them, yes. What yes. would they ask? Do they have puzzles about where they came from? Oh, yes, yes. That, that, that is an interesting thing. It's, this uh, subject we're talking about is not just an interesting little side mm -hmm. issue. No. It's actually fundamental to the whole of Christianity because mm -hmm. here's the big picture. One man, Adam, was created by God mm -hmm. and accountable to God. Mm -hmm. His children which is us, are all descended from that one man, yes. right? Via Noah, who had three sons. So all the different races on the world are descended via those three sons. That's what Genesis yes. chapter 10 says. And the next chapter is all about the episode of the Tower of Babel, where God had commanded Noah and his family to spread out and fill the earth. They'd refuse, so God comes down and he judges them and forces them to spread out through the world. So we shouldn't be surprised that if you're looking for proof that that story is true, that as we've gone to Australia or Alaska or Hungary or whatever, we have things that we can trace back to a common background. Mm. Because we all got off the same floating zoo. Mm. We all lived at the same tower for quite a while. Mm. We all knew each other back then, mm. and we all have the same great-great-grandfather, mm. mm. uh, e.g. Noah and via Noah back to Adam. Mm. So let's just deal a little bit with the issue of skin colours as the final proof okay. of that. Now, do you remember what Adam's colour was? Yes, reddish. He's got reddish, right? Not too black, not too light. Tomatoes. In fact, the American natives insist that they are the colour of the first man. Is that far from maybe the truth? Well, I think they're probably fairly close mm -hmm. because they're not too dark, they're not too light. So they have a nice rosy brown yeah, that yeah, most yeah. Europeans would sort of pay a fortune yeah. for <laughs> on the beaches of Nice in, yeah. in summertime, yeah. right? So that, they're, they're somewhere in the middle. And then you have the extremes at the black end and the white end and basically every shade in between. Yeah. Now, look at my arm. Yeah. What do you notice? Yeah, freckles. I've got freckles. Right? I'm some kind of degenerate mutant. <laughs> right? But in reality, we know exactly how you get yeah. freckles and it's exactly the same way we end up with different skin colours. I have some spots that are dark, some spots that are white, some spots that are pink and some spots have no colour at all, mm. right? And so I have the whole range of colours. I'm the United Nations on one <laughs> arm, right? That's what I am. But in reality, when I put my cells under a microscope, here's what I see. The black cells, all the colour has come to the surface, mm -hmm. right? The brown cells, the colour is right throughout the cell. Mm -hmm. The white cells, all the colour has shrunk down around the middle. And the pink cells, there's no colour at all, no. so you see blood. Yeah. Okay. Now, what you find, therefore, is when you look at black people, they're not any different colour than you are, just that all their colour is up near the surface. And the brown people, no more different number of pigment cells than you've got, but their colour is all through the cell. And the white people, the colour is down around the middle. So what we've got is something has broken in the human race that determines where the colour pigment ends up. Mm -hmm. 